Hi, my name is Justin Giarlo, and I own Shooting Gallery, White Walls Gallery, Gallery 6, and currently in the process of opening up a brand new gallery called 941 Geary here in San Francisco. Boom! Your heart. I love you. Grew up uh, like a skate punk, rockabilly music, punk rock music. I loved art, tattoo art, surf art, skateboard graphics, and uh, I took a lot of art classes in high school. I used to cut history and English and science classes and go to ceramics class or drawing and painting class. After high school, graduated and moved into San Francisco, and from 21 till about 30 or 31, I worked in nightclubs here in San Francisco. I bartended, I did the door. Uh, eventually, I started managing nightclubs, becoming the, the general manager, operations manager of uh, four different nightclubs. And uh, I just learned a lot about promoting and marketing and how to get people to show up to an event, uh, which was something that you could apply to an art gallery. And in that time period, while working in nightclubs and doing my own artwork, I'd always had an interest in owning my own art gallery, but during that time period in my mid-twenties, I just, I knew I wasn't ready. I wasn't, I didn't have the commitment to, uh, to, to make a gallery successful. Uh, but right around like 30, 31 years old, just real burnt out on working in nightclubs. Didn't really want to do it anymore. It's, it's, it's not an easy uh, lifestyle. About a year or so after I um, quit the, the clubs, I started to think about that art gallery idea again. I could probably afford to rent a space in a really shitty part of San Francisco, like the Tenderloin. Uh, but I didn't have enough money, um, had no idea. I wasn't working, so I didn't have enough money, so I decided I'd start selling drugs. Um, I sold uh, pot, cocaine, I sold ecstasy, I sold crystal from time to time if somebody wanted it. And I built up enough money um, so that I could open up an art gallery. The first gallery I opened up was, was called the Shooting Gallery. And um, at the beginning when I first opened the Shooting Gallery, I was able to get a lot of people to show up to the openings because I worked in nightclubs. I knew exactly how to get hundreds of people to show up to a party. But it was really hard to pay the bills because I wasn't selling that much art at the beginning. So I continued to sell drugs. Money got better and better and better. And as the money got better, I was able to put more and more money into the gallery. I was able to do um, advertisements in art magazines. I was able to get bigger named artists and actually fly them to San Francisco and, and pay for their hotel rooms. And about a year into the gallery is when I got busted by the cops. Um, they found $26,000 cash. They found over a pound of cocaine, like four pounds of weed, a couple hundred hits of ecstasy. Um, they found a bulletproof vest that I had. They also found a Glock, a nine millimeter Glock, and it was, it was loaded. Charges were brought for possession of narcotics, delivery of cocaine, intent to deliver an unlawful possession of a firearm. So all those things put together, cash, drugs, gun, bulletproof vest, not rad, not, not a good idea. So my attorney, Doug Rappaport, um, he's a very good attorney here in San Francisco. My attorney talked the judge who was filling in that day into moving my case to the courtroom of the judge that was retiring in just four weeks, uh, who also happened to be somewhat of an alcoholic. She sentenced me with a year of house arrest, which uh, electronic monitoring, the ankle bracelet, I was able to work eight hours a day. I had an hour to get to work and an hour to get home. The other two days a week, I had to stay indoors 24 hours a day. It's the closest thing to being in jail without being in jail, both the SF Chronicle and the San Francisco Examiner. Both did articles on me getting busted, unfortunately. Um, and so by the time I got out, everybody 
or it felt like everybody knew about it. So I couldn't hide from it. Being in the newspapers helped. If anything, getting busted made me and my gallery known to people all over the country, especially in the art world. A lot of the artists actually stepped forward and, and told me really nice things, positive things, and that's like, we want to show with you. We think you're the shit. Shepard Ferry was one of the first artists that decided he wanted to work with me because of me getting in trouble. Shepard Ferry built his career on political street art. But you probably know him for his iconic portrait of Obama. Those things all became very clear to me within a matter of a week of getting out of jail. The landlords aren't gonna evict me. People don't hate me. Artists are rallying around me. I was like, okay, this is the opportunity. This is my second chance, so I better not screw it up. And I took that second chance and I worked my ass off. 60, 70 hours a week. I did everything in my power to to keep the gallery open. So with all those things together, it, the hard work, the luck, um, the support that I had from everybody, it was the right chemistry in order f for me to to be success to be successful as I have. My name is Justin Jarla, and this is my story.